This line here is our latest thinking around how to deploy technology and how to deploy automation to fit our needs. Uh, we have about 110 people manually assembling the progenitor product, of which this line will now free up all but about 10, which is great because we've got a lot of other things we need them to be working on. <sighs> Again, rather than outsourcing the design and the build, we decided to tackle this project ourselves for a number of reasons. One, there's a lot of different things going on here. Any one automation house would have a hard time taking the holistic approach that we're taking. Two, excellent learning example experience for our local team. This entire machine was built here in Costa Rica. It came to life here, it was groomed here, continued to be designed here. So a big step forward in our evolution from that, hey, make everything anywhere else, manual assemble here in Costa Rica and then get it back out. This, this building and the people and our, and our facility here in Costa Rica has gone from you know, the typical cost center to our profit center, to what we show the world we can do. And this is becoming the forefront of that thinking. So feeder bowl technologies are bringing in uh, insert molded parts that are made over over there in our molding department. Stampings are made right over there again. All the tooling's made right over there. <sighs> Part comes in, we're using laser engraving where we used to use uh, paper labels. We're now doing real-time engraving into the plastic, which allows us to take our changeovers from 10 minutes to about, well, a tenth of a second, really. We've mimicked that press at the assembly line uh, philosophy that gets away from this local optimized departmental approach to manufacturing to look at more at the flow. Here the flow is we have a, a critical but friendly stamping that we can take in its bare form, made somewhere else, and in simulate it, integrate it into the line right at the, right at the spot. Again, less touches, less chances for failure, less chances for quality escape. Down here you'll see a, a chain drive, looks kind of like a chainsaw. We have, uh, we've looked at a number of options including magnetic rails and rotary tables and all the like. Again, we believe simplicity is genius. This is 99.9% .9 uptime, very simple, very easy to maintain, actually never goes down, but if it were to, it's a simple stepper motor, simple chain drives, everything off a piloted nest. Again, some things change, some things never change. Simple, good, quality steel, uh, pilot it in on a flexible drive, will get you all the, all the exact intolerances we need in order to make a good product. The midsection here is populating, uh, I believe we have five different metal components going in from four thousandths of an inch thick to forty thousandths of an inch thick. Some are terminals, some are blades, some are springs. Uh, all going in mechanically. So sometimes it makes sense to insert mold. In this case, obviously, there's way too many components. The trick now is to get them all in under the cycle time of the, of the assembly line. Our next step is to uh, automate the hand loading, which is being done right now using some, some really cool, uh, soon to be divulged technology. Since it's a pneumatic switch, we have um, diaphragm, which translates pressure into mechanical force. Those get populated offline, but integrated mechanically. And then from here on in, we're doing all of our checking on the system, vision systems, start, make sure that everything is exactly where it's supposed to be, both before and after the, the uh, diaphragm goes in. After that, Another piece of plastic, our housing is made over there, gets assembled. Then from here, the robots have to take over because of the heat and because of the calibration needs. We see over there our, our welding heads are using heat welds. So not the best ideal place to have somebody sticking their hands in and out of. So we're again, we're using universal robots. Our friends there have been very helpful in inspecting the right, 
the right solution for us. But we're able to now heat stake in a very simple, very, very secure methodology. Again, 99% something uptime, very repeatable, very robust, no debris generation, easy to maintain. So we're still grooming all of this, this, these test stations, the entire project is coming to life around us real time. Uh, one of the things when you build everything yourselves, you don't have anybody else to blame but yourself. So there's a lot of different moving parts that we're tackling simultaneously. But the end vision is to have all of these calibration systems online. From there, the robots take it, put it into a box. Again, not touched by any human, gets a label on it, out it goes. Uh, we're actually now toying with the idea of can we 3D print the packaging on demand at the end of the line, which would then take it one less step of human intervention and go straight from here, actually get it wrapped right here, label right here, possibly automatically to the, to the loading dock.